Today we're gonna do a first ride and run with the Suntu Race 2. Mine was a bit delayed getting here, but now we can finally put it to the test and actually see how it compares to the competitors like the Garmin Foreigner 570 for instance. And the ride we're gonna test it on is a special one. Behind me we have Kalenberg. And with my friends I have a personal KOM competition to see who can get up this hill the fastest. I've never tried it, but I'm hoping to beat my friends Thomas and Klaus up this mountain first let me check what their records are okay so Thomas did it in a time of 1152 and Klaus 1130 okay so quite some difference already I already saw on Strava that some people are able to do it under 10 minutes I think or even much less so I had to pull out all the stops we have my brand new Van Riesel bike my time trial hat which you can leave it in the comments below is not gonna make any difference for someone like me but I just thought it looked cool uh, so yeah, let's get to it. So let's see if the Suntu Race 2 can track my heart rate accurately and hopefully my heart rate will get quite high and I can push myself quite hard, but it is windy today. Oh, and I have to mention there are a few rules involved. First of all, you have to do a standing start and second, you have to start a timer manually. So I have to figure out how to do that, but let's get to it. Okay, I didn't make it 12.02, I think. Maybe doing it in the height of day with a lot of wind was not the best idea. Or maybe I'm just not powerful enough. I don't know, just annoyed. Okay, we're back home. Let's take a look at the results and let's see how the race two did for heart rate tracking during cycling and let's then go for a run. I am kind of disappointed, honestly. I did think I would be able to beat Thomas. I wasn't sure about Klaus on my first attempt. Yes, it was quite windy. Yes, it was quite hot. I had all my camera gear with me, but still I could and should have pushed harder. I wasn't fully exhausted when I came to the top. So that's a lesson for next time. I'll try to figure out the different splits I have to do for the different segments. But now I'm super excited to look at the results, so let's get to that. And here we have the results for the soon to race 2 for that single bike ride. And this looks quite good to be honest. I wasn't really expecting such a good result, but this is really quite good. So what we have here is along the horizontal axis the reference device and the soon to race 2 along the vertical axis where each dot is a single heart rate measurement and the closer the points are to the blue line the better the soon to race 2 agrees with the reference device. And as you can see, almost all points are on or close to the blue line. Only right here do we have two moments of some deviation. So once when I had a really high heart rate, it detected a slightly too low heart rate. And also right here when I had a pretty high heart rate, it also detected a too low heart rate. But otherwise this looks pretty good. And we can actually compare this for the same bike ride to the Garmin Foreigner 570 which I would say is a good comparison to the Sunto Race 2 because within the Garmin ecosystem it has roughly the same price and in addition it basically has the most premium Garmin heart rate sensor. So let's take a look at those results and these are right here. This also looks pretty good, maybe a bit more deviation from the blue line on average and there's also two moments with a bit more deviation. So right here and also right here. Overall, still both are doing pretty good, but let's take a look at the bike ride itself. Here we have that bike ride with the Suntu Race 2, with the reference device in blue green and the Race 2 in red. And overall, as we saw also in the overview, there's a pretty good agreement. Now I should mention it was relatively easy to get a good correlation here. So before that R value you saw on the top left was pretty high, I think 0.99 or something. Let's have a quick look. So indeed, the correlation was 0.99. Now the reason it's quite easy is because I had three distinct heart rate zones. So medium, low, when I was actually resting in between and very high. And that somehow is somewhat conducive to more higher correlations than I usually have in my testing. But still it looks pretty good. There was only one delay right here in picking up on an increase in heart rate. But otherwise I'm not disappointed. And again, we can compare this to the foreigner and that's right here. And I would say the foreigner might have done a little bit better, even though the correlation was a bit lower. It does miss more of the detail. So for instance, here in the lower heart rate range, if we compare that to the Sunto, well, actually it's not that different, but maybe it misses a little bit more of the details. 
but you can judge yourself. However, the four and I had less of a delay here in picking up on that increase in heart rate. So here I would slightly prefer the Forerunner, but both are doing pretty good. Now for some other bike rides, it would actually be more difficult, especially when I'm cycling through the city where there's a lot more bumpiness and stuff. So for my long-term testing, things might change a bit, but at least as an initial view, this looks pretty good. However, let's now do the exercise that this device was designed for running. Hi there, quick interruption. We'll get back to the data soon. However, if you want to support this channel, there's multiple ways of doing that and it would be greatly appreciated because making these videos next to my full-time job is not easy or cheap. So you can, for instance, become a YouTube member, which gives you early access to some videos, and that way you directly financially support the channel. Another way to support the channel is by using one of the different affiliate links in the description below, many of which gives you the best discount possible. Or if you're into running like me, the Runner app is amazing for that. It gives you the best running plans and life coaching during your runs. And if you want to get the best deal for that, that's linked up here or down here. Now back to the data. And here we have that overview for running, which again looks pretty good, though this was a relatively easy run because I didn't do clear intervals, so maybe there's less of a chance of cadence lock and also of heart rate deviations. We do see that in the highest heart rate range, the soon to detect the slightly too low heart rate right here, but we'll take a look at the run itself in a second. But let's first again take a look at the 4 and 570. And those results are displayed right here. Now there's a bit of deviation here in the lower heart rate range. We actually saw something similar for the soon to. However, in the higher heart rate range when I was actually running, the results look really good and a tiny bit better, I would say, than for the soon to race two, because there's not this deviation here in the higher heart rate range. But let's quickly take a look at the run itself. Here we have the run itself, which generally looks pretty good. So this is the soon to race two result. However, in the beginning here, I detected a too low heart rate where I did have an increase in heart rate for a second. And this might be a slight indication of cadence lock because probably my cadence was around this number. So this is probably around 148 BPM or so. However, this is a very minor deviation. But let's compare this to the foreigner and the foreigner indeed did a bit better. It didn't have that problem right here in the beginning. I would say both are doing pretty good, but the foreigner just did a tiny bit better here in the beginning. Though it's difficult to draw any definitive conclusions between the foreigner 570 right here and then the soon to race two right here. Both, I would say, generally did good enough. Okay, so this was a very initial review or test of the soon to race two. But what is my initial conclusion? Well, it actually looked pretty good. It looked a bit better than what we've seen in the past for the Zoom 2 Race S and the Zoom 2 Race. So it's promising that there's potentially an improvement in the heart rate tracking of the Zoom 2 Race series. Also, one thing that positively surprised me is how much I like the design of this new watch. The screen is very clear and bright and it's relatively understated and clean. So I just really like the way it looks. You can see the screen is really bright and it's just a nice UX UI design. Is that the way you say it? The interface is just quite nice. Now I cannot make any definitive recommendations yet because I need to do more testing of the heart rate tracking. However, because of the sheer amount of devices releasing at the moment, I cannot do a ton of testing on this watch right now that I have to wait a month or two. So I did want to get this initial review out, but the initial signs are good. However, even though I didn't have severe cadence lock during running, I do know that Chase the Summit and I think even Matt Legrand did have some of these issues, so also check out their reviews. On the other hand, I think that DC Rainmaker and Desfit didn't have these issues, so it appears to be somewhat sporadic. I'll do a ton of more runs with this at the end of the year and then we'll find out if there's major issues or not. But as I said, the design is great. In terms of looks, it's one of my favorite devices out there right now. But of course, that's somewhat personal. Now, if you do decide to get the Zoom to Race 2, a Garmin Foreigner, another device, maybe an HD pod, a whoop strap, or something else, if you want to get the best discount possible and also financially support the channel at the same time, there's different affiliate discount links to Amazon and other things down below. And that would really help the channel because I'm doing all of this next to my full time 
full-time job as a scientist and it's not a cheap hobby or second job because I have to buy a bunch of devices, pay my editor and of course there's also camera gear. Just this whole setup I'm holding in my hand right now is a few thousand euros. I would really appreciate it and if you want to directly financially support the channel you can also become a YouTube member. Now I think you will like this video on the Garmin 4970 or this video on the Ace Sleep Pod.